Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our special education town hall meeting. Um, it, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. And, you know, we would like, first of all, we would like to thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, we have a lot of updates and resources in store for you guys. I would like to um, start by, you know, introducing uh, my, my colleagues and the staff who will be helping me out tonight. Um, go ahead, you guys. I'm going to give the floor to you guys. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Mai Cruz. I'm one of the special education coordinators. I am currently assigned at um, Calaveras, Gavilan Hills, and HDLA. Hi, I'm Shannon Parsons. I'm also one of the coordinators for special education. I'm assigned to Lad Lane, Rancho San Justo Middle School, and Sunny Slope Elementary. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Romero, and I'm also a special education coordinator, and I'm assigned to uh, Mays Middle School, Ardo Hardin, and uh, Sarah Vista. Okay, so I'm going to be asking Brandon to present, um, to check on the screen what we have in store for you guys today. I know that we started this school year with the major steps of, you know, distance learning. Um, and all of our staff and our families have worked hard to ensure that our students with special needs continue to access learning even remotely, right? Um, I just want to let you know, you know, the work that happened behind the scene. Um, if you could go to the next slide, Daniel. You know, as a team, when we reflected what, um, what happened during uh, the March COVID closure, you know, as a department, we've learned that our staff and our families, our students, that we are all resilient people, right? When that closure happened, we are just quick to respond and quick to adapt to the changes. We also learned that by working together, we can make things happen. Our staff, you know, and families put their heads together to ensure that our students will continue to learn, right, in any modality that we could provide, whether it's through packets, whether it's through distance learning. Everyone put their heads together and everyone went above and beyond to make things happen. Um, and again, you know, we would just like to, um, you know, I would just like to emphasize the importance of, you know, uh, of helping each other, especially during this time, and the importance of working with the families and working with the staff and that, you know, that communication. Right, guys? Yes. yes. Okay. Our theme for the year is actually... Um, not Star Wars. Star Wars was last year. The theme for the year is Harry Potter and that one of the lines in there was we are strong as we are united. So hashtag spread unite and hashtag better together. And that is true because we can only make things happen if we work together as, as a team, mm -hmm. right? Especially during this unprecedented time. You know, we've introduced, you know, our, our new special education leadership team for this school year. I don't know if I introduce myself. I'm Gwen McKeeran. I'm the special education um, director, and we've been with you guys since last year, and we're excited to, um, you know, take this um, responsibility again to work with you and take the lead when it comes to our special education program. Um, do you guys want to share, you know, what are the signs that are assigned to you guys and then your responsibility and role for the school year? Let's start with you, Daniel. Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, I'm at, I'm at uh, Mays, uh, Ardo Hard and Tensera Vista. Mm -hmm. So we, are, um, we do a lot of the IP compliance and monitoring. Um, I actually oversee the SOAR program, which is our um, uh, ED uh, classrooms at uh, May Middle School, and we have two classrooms at Sierra Vista, which is a new location this school year. Um, I also oversee the, the non-public schools and the RTC, and uh, the community. Uh, I also attend the Community Advisory co uh, Committee, uh, which is the, the CAC, which we'll talk about a little, mm -hmm. little bit later, mm -hmm. and also the parent workshops, which will also give you guys a schedule of that uh, for the rest of the school year. Shannon? Mm -hmm. Hi, so again, I'm Shannon Parsons, and I um, work with placement and transition, the transfers and supports. Um, I work up as well as um, the other coordinators with IEP compliance and monitoring. Um, I work uh, very closely with our um, moderate to severe population in our um, CFEP program. 
um, which is located on Lead Lane Elementary as well as Rancho San Justo Middle School. I uh, work with our mild to moderate population that is at Sunny Slope Elementary School. I'm your Captain Autism Lead. Your Captain is the California Autism Professional Training and Information Network. Um, so I represent um, uh, Hollister Elementary School District for Captain. I'm also your uh, assistive technology um, certified specialist for the school district. So I work closely with the teachers and um, making sure that your children um, have what they need to access curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I uh, work with the pair of professionals um, and uh, schedule their workshops and to make sure that they're highly trained and um, uh, work closely with the teachers and students mm -hmm. in Hollister Elementary School District. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shannon. Bye. Just like what my co-coordinators were saying, placement and transition, IEP compliance and monitoring are, you know, things that we all do and we work together. Um, specifically, um, my responsibility for this year is really more focused on curriculum and instruction, co-teaching, assessment, and professional development for our class, uh, for our certificated staff members, and also media relations and local dispute resolution. I love that media relation piece. You know, Mai is really good with, you know, putting together our flyers, our slides. You know, she has that, um, that visual, technical visual expertise to make sure that you guys can fully understand, um, you know, in, in, a, in a very visual manner, all the inf information that, uh, that we provide to our parents and to our staff. All right, so we're gonna move things along. We just wanna inform you, um, our, our community and our parents with regard to the special education programs that we offer within our school district. Um, I'm sure you know the continuum of programs that we have from what we call the least restrictive environment, which is our general education setting and to all those um, services or programs that we provide for our students with special needs. I'm gonna be giving the floor back again to our coordinators to talk about what are those special day class programs and special education supports that we offer to our students with special needs. So first, our Comprehensive Functional Education Program, or CFEP, is um, our moderate to severe program that um, both the programs are, our elementary program is at Lad Lane, our middle school program is at Rancho San Justo. Um, this program, again, is um, generally our most restrictive program that serves our students with moderate to severe disabilities and the regional program. Mm -hmm. um, Primarily, the students in this program are going to have moderate to severe severity in their disabilities, such as autism, deaf and blindness, intellectual disabilities, multiple disabilities, um, grades through um, TK through 8. Mm -hmm. Shannon mentioned regional program. Mm -hmm. It means that this program also serves other um, students uh, within, other students in another school district within our county. Okay. So also uh, our SOAR program that I talked about a little bit earlier that is currently at a new location for the elementary at Sierra Vista. Mm -hmm. um, so that is also uh, considered a, a mild uh, mod, uh, disability program, but it's also our um, st most, uh, students with emotional uh, needs program. And it's a program that we've been revamping since starting last year. Uh, it used to be a STEPS program. Now uh, we call it the, the SOAR program. We, we uh, came up with a whole new criteria and a whole new entire handbook that um, revamping the entire program. So it's we're something we're really excited about. Uh, we have a great staff that works with our students. Uh, that includes uh, not only the three teachers, but also paras that are highly trained. We have, um, in each of the classrooms, we also have a um, mental health therapist that works with the, um, with the team. And also we have a behavior specialist, specialist that work with all three classes too. So. It's been, um, it's, we're really excited about this program and, and moving forward, and that's something that we, we look forward to in the future to continue to um, improve the program.
<laughs> Daniel, can you uh, share with our families and the community to, you know, the most exciting thing happening to this program this school year is our partnership with the Diagnostic Center of Northern California. Yeah, this year we're fortunate to uh, have that partnership, which um, has been, uh, they've been providing, they're going to pro uh, training to our staff and also uh, feedback on, on some of the stuff that we've been doing. We've been revamping. Mm -hmm. Also, the DSN has also uh, uh, conducted trainings for the entire staff at Maze and um, Maze and Sierra Vista to, mm -hmm. to go over, uh, you know, with all of the teachers so that they are understanding of our program and understanding of all the services that you know we provide. And that that's a wonderful opportunity, you know, that was provided to us this school year. I, I mean, our project, Daniel, with regard to. Uh, you know, with regard to the Diagnostic Center support is what we call building social emotional resilience for our students with special needs, which is at this unprecedented time is, I, we believe, is our highest priority, right? Yeah. Because it's just so hard to continue teaching our students and to continue learning if you're not emotionally regulated. And this is something that we would like for all of our students with special needs to achieve, right? Have that social emotional resilience. Um, and just like what Daniel said, it will be an ongoing training, you know, for our staff. And it's not just the staff within our program, but also the staff at those particular school sites, which is such an exciting time for our school district. Okay, yeah. All right. So like the, um, the special day classes that are at um, Lad Lane and Rancho, we have a program that is a mild to moderate program. These are um, housed at Ara Hardin, Sunny Slope, Sarah Vista, Rancho, and Mays. Students in the mild to moderate program are not impacted as much um, as their peers that are in the moderate to severe program. They might uh, demonstrate more independence and um, an ability to um, to function at a higher level. That this also includes students that have mild to moderate severity of autism, deaf and blindness, intellectual disabilities, multiple disabilities, and the continuum. Um, the moderate specific learning disabilities. And again, this program serves our students with special needs from TK through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about our resource specialist yeah. program, Mike? So one of um, our programs is resource specialist program. This is actually our least restrictive environment in the special education setting. We have um, RSD programs at Calaveras, Sarah Vista, Gavilan Hills, HDLA, mm -hmm. Lad Lane, R. Hardin, Sunny Slope, Mays, and Rancho. So again, this disability ranges from mild to moderate um, uh, disability and typically students with specific learning disabilities mm -hmm. and other disabilities in mild severity are in this program. And so those students are typically pulled out of their general education, um, from their general education classes um, for a portion of the day. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mike, can you share with our families as well, um, you know, that our new initiative for this school year uh, that has something to do with our resource specialist program, our co-teaching. You're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are actually excited about our new initiative and we have also partnered with Supporting Inclusion Practices, which is one of the programs uh, initiated by California Department of Education or CDE. And that is, you know, in order for us to build mm -hmm. our way through inclusion, we started our co-teaching classes in all of our sixth grade classes at basically Calaveras, Sarah Vista, HDLA, Lad Lane, Sunny Slope, Mays, and Rancho. Our Hardin does not have a sixth grade, so that's the reason why we don't have it there. But we are excited about this initiative because, you know, we've partnered with one of the best, you know, programs uh, that CDE has to offer. Well, it sounds like, you know, this school year is not just busy because of the distance learning, but we have a lot of exciting opportunities in store for, you know, our, our, our students with special needs. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, we would like to talk about our learning continuity plan. This is something that we provided, you know, at the beginning of the year to all of the parents. 
our learning continuity plan is what we call our um, our blueprint when it comes to our special education supports you know, for the entire school year, right? It serves as our guideline as we pivot in and out of distance learning, right? We wanna talk about how does it look like briefly. We're not gonna go into very much details. Our learning continuity plan can be accessed in our district website, um, as well as all the other supports that are in store for our families and our staff. Let's go to the next page, Daniel. All right, so this is an overview of our um, special education learning continuity plan. On the left side, you are going to see all the learning phases. Phase one is actually distance learning, which we are in at this moment. Phase two is where we, um, you know, we move forward with hybrid learning. Hopefully, we'll be able to, right. you know, be in that situation soon. Um, phase three is the in-person learning. So this, this is our regular you know, school day, like mm -hmm. in-person learning. Mm -hmm. And we are going to the five major areas that we are going to prioritize this year for our students and our families are um, under curriculum and instruction. We want to make sure that we provide our students with high quality cu curriculum and instruction. Also progress monitoring that is data driven and giving um, equitable access to learning and of course, uh, again, what, what Daniel was saying about social emotional learning, happy to be working with um, DCN on that one. And most, and most of all, engaging and supporting staff and families. And that is the reason why we, you know, we have continuous professional development for all our staff certificated and classified as well as parent workshops for our families. Mm -hmm. And by now, you should be receiving, you should have received your um, students' individualized distance learning plan, um, you know, from your teachers, uh, from your child's teacher mm -hmm. or case manager. And this is not the first or the last workshop that we have in store for you guys. Um, just like what Mai mentioned, part of our planning and one of, our, one of the areas of priorities that we have for this school year is to make sure that not just our staff um, would have that professional development, but even our families. Later, um, you know, during this workshop, Daniel will be able to talk more about those workshops to kind of help you both, because we really do believe that, you know, for distance learning to be successful, it has to be a partnership between the home and the school setting, okay? Um, so I, I I, I guess just the, that's about it for a learning continuity plan. You know, our, our SPED department would continue to improve our program. We value all the feedback, all the input that we can get from you guys, um, you know, to, to help us, you know, to, to make sure that we're all successful um, in, in providing the quality instruction for our students with special needs. I'm going to be excusing our um, two coordinators, Shannon and Mai, for the rest of our webinar um, tonight. And I'm going to be inviting over our parent guest. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Thanks, Mai. everyone. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be calling to join us um, Ms. Cynthia Arizon and Ms. Addison Garcia. They are our Community Advisory Committee parent representatives. Join us. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to give them an opportunity, you know, just introduce yourself briefly. You know, um, I, I know we know each other. We've been working together ever since um, I started working for our SELPA as our as their SELPA program specialist and being involved with Community Advisory Committee. Cynthia. Hello, everybody. My name is Cynthia Arizona, and I'm the mm -hmm. mother of Lupe Darison. She's actually attending La Lane School, and this is her first year there. Mm -hmm. My name is Allison Garcia, and I actually have two boys. Um, Emilio, who is 10, who um, attends Lad Lane, and Marcos, who is 7, who attends Lad Lane. Emilio is in the 5th grade this year, and Marcos is in the 2nd grade. 
Uh, both Cynthia and um, Allison are our Community Advisory Committee Hollister School District Parent Representative, and Daniel is our um, Administrator Representative for that committee. So when we say Community Advisory Committee or CAC, this is the advisory group that gives input and provides feedback, suggestion, you know, to the district, to the SELPA, and to the county in terms of helping special education programs succeed, right? Um, and also you guys have input and you guys put your heads together in, in, in coming up with activities and workshops for our families. Right, Daniel? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. And um, I, um, I was gonna share the actual, um, the SELPA page where you mm -hmm. can find all the information for the mm -hmm. CAC uh, committee. It just tells you who's, uh, who's in, um, involved who is a representative for each of the school districts mm -hmm. and it also gives you the schedule of mm -hmm. when um, we're meeting and it also gives you the agendas and all of the upcoming training so this is a good place to go um, to get the information also if you're not able to attend our meetings but you're definitely welcome to um, join us right your voice is very important for us to continue to improve our programs um, please we invite you to join in all of our CAC meetings they have um, a, a lot of workshops um, to offer for this school years. I think they're all amazing. But also we do have, Daniel, uh, parent workshops, right, in store for the entire we, school year. Can you talk more do. about that? We um, do. Aside from their workshops and their trainings that they're doing mm -hmm. with parents, uh, Hollister School District, we have our own. And I just want to share with you guys some of the mm -hmm. dates here that we have. Um, obviously, this is the first one here. Um, and then we have an October... Um, on October 15th, which is going to be on behavior support at home. Mm -hmm. That one is going to be uh, done by our uh, behavior specialists here in our school district. They will be doing a, a, a training there. And I believe... Um, and we do have more trainings, I yes. guess, sometime in November we do and have. December. We have trainings regarding social-emotional support at home as well as um, autism workshop uh, that we provide to all of the parents by our captain uh, representative. Yeah, I think the link is not coming up, but um, we have another one in mm -hmm. December and another one in uh, February. And uh, the next one after behavior support at home is gonna be the social emotional. And that one's gonna be, um, that one's gonna be led by our mental health therapist also here in the school district. And our autism support is going to be um, by our two cadre our representative, which would be Mrs. Uh, Parsons and also uh, Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, th they'll be doing that um, also. Well, I want to ask our parent representatives um, tonight. Uh, we want to hear, you know, what what is your experience like during distance learning? I know it's been a month. You know that we are in in this type of platform but i want to hear from from the parents how has it been you know tell us your successes and your your challenges during this time uh my for the first month it was kind of difficult for us to be logging in mm -hmm. uh, but after that we kind of got step by step how to be logging in so it made it a little bit more easier for us mm -hmm. to log into class and mm -hmm. it was I don't want to say it's very shiny, but I'm gonna say now it's very pretty easy. <laughs> That's good. That's good to know. Any challenges that you're encountering until now? Um, until now, that? no. I've been having no difficulties logging in. Everything's been pretty smooth. And and I know that we have like a longer period of time in terms of that live instruction, and it was and it was challenging at the beginning of the year for all of our parents and our staff, and we got a lot of feedback from our parents. That's why we have to recalibrate a bit, you know, making sure that we have a blended platform of asynchronous and synchronous. Were you guys like you know with with that routine of one uh, activity to another? Uh, how, how has it been with you guys? Were you able to now adapt to that routine of distance learning, Allison? Um, yeah. It, at first, the first month was a very big trial and error, especially because I have two. Mm -hmm. um, Emilio, my 10-year-old, is 
pretty independent, so he could get on himself, so that helps out a lot. My seven-year-old, I have to be right there with him. So changing screens is not always the easiest because he likes to pound on the computer while I'm trying to, mm -hmm. you know, either get his work or changing screens. But so far, like, the scheduling has been pretty good. I haven't really had any problems. Um, I do need to tell you guys that I was very terrified at the beginning. I almost lost it at the beginning because mm -hmm. I was like, how are my kids going to do this? I have two. I'm never going to be able to do this. Right. And so um, right now, the first month, I'm pretty impressed mm -hmm. with everything. You know, the teachers, the staff, the people behind it, um, you know, with my kids. Mm -hmm. So we've adopted pretty well. Well, that, that's pretty amazing, um, Addison. It's giving me goosebumps just, just hearing, mm -hmm. you know, that success story because I, I, I know their kids pretty well. Um, how about you, Daniel? I know you're, uh, you're, you have a kid at first grade or a kindergartner at HDLA? Um, I have a first grader uh -huh. at, at HDLA, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as a parent, um, I remember uh, the first day when I helped them log in, I, I understood what parents were going through because it was kind of a, I had a, do a couple of things to try to log them in. So in a way, I, I do feel for, for parents at the beginning, right? But then mm -hmm. once you, um, you know, once you start logging in, you you kind of get the hang of it. And uh, also helping parents out too on the phone that, that mm -hmm. were reaching out to us, just kind of, um, you know, helping them out too, just making sure that they're able to, to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom of a third grader. And to be honest with you, the first day of school, I decided to work from home because we've, we've been working on site ever since, you know, we had the school closure. And first time I, you know, I felt the, the stress of our mm -hmm. parents and not just our parents or staff as well. Even my husband can figure out Google Meet. He doesn't know what the Google Classroom is. So it was really a huge learning curve for the family but yes you're right you know i mean talking about that resilience right that ability to adapt quickly i mean i experienced that myself even with my own son and for him to say every day you know he's excited to go to meet he excited to go to his google classroom that's a huge thing although i would hear him say occasionally i want to see my friends you know i want to go to the playground right um so that's good. That's good information. I think we're just mm -hmm. so afraid of change. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people like change, but um, yeah, I think the kids take it better. I think the kids take it sometimes better than the parents. <laughs> <laughs> and they because are. Because they're young. True. They're, they're, you know, like you said, they're resilient. They're mm -hmm. young. They, you know, they just go with whatever. And they are much better with technology than, than mm -hmm. us adults, oh, yeah. right? My ten-year-old could figure out pretty much <laughs> anything. Yeah. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm just curious. Like, what have been you know most helpful for you guys in navigating distance learning? Is it you know coming uh, support coming from the district, from the teachers, from the school? What kind of help you the most? You know, just to get through with it. Uh, I've been having a lot of help from the district and the teachers. Um, at first, how my daughter, she's not able to see mm -hmm. far away. So they actually did a binder special for her that where she could be touching. Mm -hmm. So it's really neat that I'm able to get that resource to the school district mm -hmm. and the teachers. It's mm -hmm. been a great help. That's good. That's good to know, Cynthia. That's good. I'm going to make sure that I will talk to the teacher and commend Cynthia's teacher. How about you, Addison? Same thing, um, you know, like I said, my one of my sons, Emilio's 10, Marcos is 7, mm -hmm. I'm really involved, um, I talk to the teachers like, probably like they're my best friends. Um, which <laughs> We've been I, talking to each other I guess, since too. I mean, I guess it could be a good thing and a bad thing, but I'm very close with my teachers. Mm -hmm. um, the district, I know a few people, mm -hmm. my resources, my go-to mm -hmm. resources. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, the teachers have been probably, I think, one of my biggest supports. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that really helps me is my 10-year-old teacher, her name's Miss Gemma Castillo. Castillo. Mm -hmm. She actually came, set my computer up, and put bookmarks on the top of the computer. Wow. So that way, so that way when you log on the computer, mm -hmm. you just go to the bookmarks. 
um, which helps Emilio a lot, and you know me too, because then I don't have to sit there with them. But um, I mean, everybody I think behind everything has been, I mean, the school, the school delivered the, their desk to us. I mean, you know, I think everyone behind the scene has just been working, you know, together, and it's, it's been amazing. I mean, I can just imagine how, this, how much behind the scene they're so busy, but um, the turnaround time is, it's not that long to wait, so it's pretty, I mean, they've been behind us pretty much the whole way. And just like what Allison said, I, you know, our pretty much our department, you know, the, even the school site, you know, the, you know, the employees at the district, please reach out to us. Whatever support that we could provide, we would we would try our best to accommodate because we want to ensure that you are successful as well at the home front. And this is the only way that we could make it happen, right? At this time of the year, during the school year, we're really putting an effort and much more attention in reaching out to the families and communication. And I'm so glad that it, you guys are benefiting from it. As you know, Daniel is the one making sure that all of you guys would have the text <laughs> messages <laughs> at the district level. <laughs> um, I, I, I just want to ask, you know, I mean, what can you say to the parents out there? I'm sure we have a lot of parents listening to us, you know, in terms of, you know, our role, you know, as parents uh, with this distance learning platform. My advice is to be patient with your child. I know some parents get frustrated, but just have a lot of patience. It takes time to build it, but you'll get used to it. At first, I was kind of getting stressed out with all going on, but after I'm like, I need to take it easy. True. And, true. Um, so I'm saying be very patient with your child. I would say the same, just like Cynthia said. I mean, if you're stressed, your child's stressed. Mm -hmm. They could feel it, um, and it's not a fun a fun fight to fight. Um, and the other thing is just get involved, be involved, mm -hmm. know know what's going on. You know, um, you know, like you like Gwen said, if you have to reach out to somebody, reach out to somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm always open for mm -hmm. anybody to contact me about you know, resources, how I can help them. Um, I'm always open for people too. I mean, so if they don't, you know, if they don't know where to go or who to talk to, you know, I'm, I'm here too for anybody, you know, mm -hmm. cause I'm all, I just, I, you know, I, I've been in, I've been in this boat for quite a few years. So, um, I've experienced, experienced a lot. Right? I've experienced highs a lot. Lows. I mean, I actually have a brother who's special needs and he's 40. Mm -hmm. So I know the high level, the low level. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, so, um, but yeah, I just say get involved. Know, know your kids, know your teachers, know your district. Um, you know, knows who, know who's behind the scenes, know who's in front of the scenes, mm -hmm. you know. And we are going also to include, um, you know, if you want to reach out to Cynthia and Allison as our CAC representative. And, you know, it's good, you know, with, with parents talking to another parent, like, how is it working for you, right? Like, you know, what, what works and what not. So it's good to have that dialogue with other parents who are going through the same thing. I mean, we're going to be um, if that's okay, I mean, we're going to put something in at the end of our website. How can you reach all of us, right? In terms of support, like we're very much open to, to reaching out to a lot of parents, but we want to hear more from you too. Um, how about, uh, how about your message to our staff? You mentioned those are working in front of and behind the scene, right? Our IT, our secretaries, the custodian, you know, our uh, our health department, you know, all our, um, all the, the meal preppers, right? And even those who work in front of the scene, like our staff, our teachers, our service providers, the administrators, like, what is your message for all of them? My message is I'm very happy with all the services that my daughter's getting. Uh, staff has been great to us. They've been there for us when we need something. They're on top of everything, and I'm very happy with everything that we have going on. How about you, Allison? My message would be just 
to be kind, <laughs> be patient, <laughs> um, hang in there. <laughs> it's, you know, it's going to be a tough, long road, but uh, together we can do it. Um, so yeah, be kind, be patient. And that's probably be involved, <laughs> you know, don't forget the people behind the scenes. They're not little people. They're still involved, you know, um, cause I know sometimes we just see the teacher and you know, who's in front of us. Mm -hmm. Don't forget all the people behind the scenes that make everything come together too. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. be kind and be an appreciative, right? Yeah, you know, be grateful. Like, like it takes the entire village to make this whole mm -hmm. distance learning work, right? Just like what I mentioned, we have those, the, you know, the IT or our food department, right? Working together to make it happen. How about you, Daniel? You know, just we all working together, you know, mm -hmm. if you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to the teachers, to us. I mean, we're all, um, I think right now, especially during these unprecedented times, you know, we all have questions or concerns. Um, as long as we work together, I think we're, we're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. And, and before we end, I just want to show them our, our last slide in terms of all our um, parent resources and support, Daniel, the one before that. So we have our website that you can go to um, for special education here at the HESD.org. Mm -hmm. it, um, it has all of our resources here. Um, so it's got our pictures there, in just in case you can contact us. It's got our... And we can put your pictures to because our CAC rep, yes, awesome. <laughs> right? Um, it's got our extensions here. Um, if you need to get a hold of us here on the phone here in our, in our, um, in our office, um, you can have, there's a link here for parents, uh, resources. So it's got everything uh, you would need to know here when it comes to all of our trainings, all of our... Um, you know, the parent handbook, the parent, your parent rights, community resources. So it, everything's in here that you, um, all our resources that you can, um, you know, our SELPA, our policy forms, uh, professional development that we have, um, our staff. So this is a great resource for you guys to, um, you know, to, to check out. And uh, it's a great, um, like I said, my, um, my put relations. everything together. She, yeah, she adds everything. That and Brandon we helps us a lot too. <laughs> Brandon Johnson, that you're talking about behind the scenes, right? He's the man. <laughs> they all say shh. <laughs> <laughs> and then also um, Twitter too. Uh, feel free to join us uh, to follow us, and that uh, we we do updates also on there if you're mm -hmm. on Twitter. And of course, we talked about our parent workshops and our community advisory uh, committee. Our parent handbook, which you will find on our website too. Mm -hmm. So this is also, a, again, a good resource for you to know um, exactly of our procedures and uh, stuff right. like that. All the legal mandates about special education is in the handbook. Yes, Allison. Mm -hmm. What about SPIN? Should we put like something you think you should at SPIN? So I believe that's IR. Yes. yes. Oh, you mean the um, SPIN and SARC? Yes, it's in our yeah. website okay. too. Thank you for bringing that up, um, yes. Addison. Addison mentioned SPIN, mm -hmm. um, which is our special education um, information network for families. If you scroll down, uh, Daniel, you will be able to see that. So we have the Parent Handbook. Those are the community um, resources that we have. We have Parents Healthy Parents. Um, San Andreas Regional Center. Mm -hmm. We have our local San Andreas Regional Center here in Hollister School. And here in Hollister, if you click on that link, you'll be able to see, you know, contact information. Please reach out to SARC. And just like what I mentioned, SPIN, because they do have resources for the family that, they, that you guys can avail of to support you, especially during this time. So yeah, so um, we added those links on there so you can easily just click on them and it goes take you straight, uh, straight to the website. Mm -hmm. So that's really a user-friendly uh, website that we have for our um, families and our staff. And just like, you know, what our friends mentioned tonight, we just want to close this webinar by letting you guys know that we are in this together, right? More than ever, this is the time that we have to hold hands and be partners, okay? More than ever, this is the time that calls for empathy, for flexibility, and for patience. Everyone is working harder than before, from families to staff, just like what we mentioned, staff who works 
behind and in front of the scene are going above and beyond to make sure that all, not just our students with special needs, but every student here within our school district will have access to learning, not just learning, but you know the, the, the necessities, the supports that they have, even you know with, with meals and technology, right? And we just wanna say thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. And we wanna commend everyone from the families to our students, right? Who are eager to learn each day. And also we appreciate, you know, the hard work and the efforts of all the staff here in Holster School District. Again, thank you. And we wish you good night. Um, if you could just flash once again, Daniel, our uh, how can they reach us? If you have any questions, you know, feel free to email me and Daniel. That's our um, email addresses. And, and again, we would continue to reach out and provide you update month after month through our SPED um, newsletter. Yeah, okay. so, mm -hmm. so, yeah, so thank you for joining us. And our next virtual meeting, like I mentioned, it will be on October 15th at 530. And uh, that's going to be our behavior support at home with our... Uh, behavior specialist here from the district office so um, please join us if you if if, uh, if you can all right anything else I just wanted to say also if um, you guys are feeling that you need like some support at home um, that the school district can't do because of the distance learning um, there is a couple programs from SARC if you get a hold of your SARC worker um, I just discovered it's called a personal assistant program. Not really sure how it works yet because I haven't got in the system yet. But um, but if you call SARC and ask your coordinator, they should be able to direct you to the right um, person for that. Uh, I know, um, I'm sorry, I know we're ending, but Allison um, shared with me some information. Mm -hmm. Maybe Allison, do you have maybe a couple of minutes you can kind of share with your experience with this new program? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, like I said, I just applied, so I really don't know how it works yet. Um, but I believe that it is a separate program from your respite, mm -hmm. and it's called personal assistance. And um, basically what I was told is they'll come into the house and help you um, with pretty much about anything, I think. That's so awesome. get a hold of your SART coordinators and ask them about the personal assistant program. Um, and see, you know, see what you can get. Mm -hmm. it, um, it never hurts to ask. True. That is true. It never hurts to ask. And no question is a stupid question. And probably in our next workshop, Daniel, we could invite, you know, Spin or Sark to, to join us and talk a bit about, you know, about the services that they offer, especially during this time. We need that more than uh -huh. ever. All right, that's it for now. Um, have a good night, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again.